Today we'll be making acid pulls for our tabletop games. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here. If you haven't done so already and want weekly inspiration, then subscribe to the channel. In this video, we're going to be crafting three versions of modular acid pulls. So don't forget to stay until the end of the video so you can see which versions you like best. Acid Pull 1, the cheap and easy version. This first build that we're going to be building today is the cheaper and less intimidating one. To build it, all we need is a hobby knife, foam board, PVA glue, black paint, sand, pebbles, and a hot glue gun. I'm using Elmer's foam board for this project, but you really can get away with using the cheaper kind, some thick chipboard, or even some cardboard. First thing, I just cut out a rough shape I wanted to use for the acid pool. Then I bevel and round out the edges of the foam board. I try to keep the shape more organic in order to make it look more realistic later on. And there we have our base. In order to prevent a lot of the warping, I stabbed a bunch of cocktail sticks into the foam. I don't usually have problems with warping, but I decided to try to take some extra measures. Then with my knife, I shape spare bits of foam board and glue them to my base. These pieces will be hidden later on, so we just want to build up a rim around the base, just to get the basic shape we're going for. After gluing those pieces in place, I continue to shape the piece with my hobby knife and cut everything more flush to the base. Then I glued some rocks and pebbles in some of the crevices and places I wanted to hide the seams. Also, just randomly on the base. Here, I'm using Elmer's white PVA glue, but you can speed things up a little and fill gaps better just using hot glue. And now, I'm using black paint mixed with PVA glue to add sand to the base. I like to add black paint to the mix so that I have an easier time seeing where I've already applied the glue. It isn't necessary though, and I just do a section at a time and sprinkle sand over the paint. And make sure to leave the middle section free of glue and sand. We want that as flat and smooth as we can get it for when we do the acid pool. I then go back over the base and add some more sand to spots I wanted to fill in more. Just building it up in layers, then I leave it to dry. We want to coat this in our black undercoat to really harden things up and seal in all the sand and rocks. I let that dry overnight and then even painted the bottom side of the piece. This doesn't only protect it more, but doing so will doubly prevent the base from being warped and wobbly. Next, we want to turn this crater into a bubbling pit of acid. So, we are going to add a bunch of round drops of hot glue to the build, making sure that we have a good variety of large and small drops. I probably should have done this step before painting everything black. Regardless, it will be fine for this time. For the next part, we're going to be using various craft paints, including white, bright green, dark gray, light gray, and beige. We will also be using Mod Podge or PVA glue, matte varnish, and gloss varnish. I first paint the piece in a modeling of dark gray, light gray, and beige. No specific advice here, I just paint all these colors on without waiting for them to dry and it sort of blends in nice and modeled looking. And while painting the piece, I realized some of my bubbles melted into each other, so I scraped them off and replaced them with some nice round beads of hot glue. And now, I cover the acid pull part of our build with a super thick coating of Mod Podge. And if you don't have Mod Podge, you can just use a thick coat of white glue. This coating is just to smooth everything up and make the bubbles look like they're a part of the liquid and not just beads of hot glue. This will take a couple hours to dry, but after it does dry, you will see that it really smoothed everything out and started to help give it that liquid appearance. At that point, we can dry brush a cream colored highlight over the whole piece. I painted the acid with some gecko green paint. This is by Delta Ceram Coat, but you can really use any sort of bright green paint or whatever color of acid you're going for, just use that paint. I add a thick coat of this and slightly blend the outer edge of the pool into the sand. I then do a second coat of the bright green. This time, I dab it on and do my best to blend out some of the still wet brush strokes. At this point, it's really starting to look good. I do a dry brush of white over the bubbles in the acid pool. And though this doesn't really look that great right now, it is more to prepare for the next step. And that next step is adding a glaze of the spring green. 
And we'll just keep it simple this time and add a drop of the green paint to water. And then apply the thin coat to the acid pool. Just do a nice wet coat over the brighter colored green. The water will pull around the bubbles and bring out the details nicely. If you do add a little bit too much water, you can just take a tissue and dab some of it off and it'll look just fine. After that dried, I decided I wanted to touch it up a little with some bright gecko paint. I just used it to highlight the bubbles more and cover up some of the uglier spots the wash had pulled. Then, after spray varnishing the piece, I add a thick layer of high gloss varnish to the acid part of the pool. This will make it super shiny and really give it that liquid vibe. This acid pool was nostalgic for me and brought back a lot of good memories of building terrain back in the day. Back when materials were a lot less accessible to me and I had to use supplies I could either get cheap or scavenge. And here's the finished piece. And here's what it would look like a few other colors. Yellow, purple, red, these would all be good colors to do your acid pools. Acid pool 2. For this first part, you will need spare XPS foam, a cheap serrated paring knife, a lighter or even a candle, and a respirator. If you want to help support this channel, you can do so at no extra cost to you by purchasing through one of the Amazon links in the description. The very first thing I do is bevel the piece of foam with a cheap serrated paring knife. Instead of using a slicing motion, I use the knife to rip and tear the foam. This is highly effective to get a realistic rock-like texture. Then I use a flame to burn a crater-like indentation on top of the piece. Burning foam is toxic, so if you're following along, make sure you're wearing a respirator and are in a well-ventilated area. Sometimes a flame can be hard to control, so it can be beneficial to chisel out the start of the crater first, then put it over the flame. It can especially be hard to get a pit to form in smaller pieces like this. Our Jeremiah here. I just wanted to interrupt this video for a minute to do a comment shout out. And that comment I actually deleted on accident. Sorry about that. But the comment, I wanted to highlight because of that, because it was an accident. Anyway, the highlighted comment is from Jerezov. So in the last video, I did some miniature paintings, and I actually hand painted those. And if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. But anyway, he was asking if there's some way to make it look like it's hand painted if you just print it out. The best answer I had for that was to print it out and then paint either matte or gloss varnish over the top. If you want heavier brush strokes, get yourself some gel medium and that'll do some heavy brush strokes that you can paint over the top. So yeah, thanks for commenting. Next week, I won't have somebody's deleted. And I appreciate you, Jerezob. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong, but I appreciate you watching and commenting on these videos. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna skip on over to the third type of pool. Don't be alarmed though. The only difference between these two types of pools is how we form that indentation. Acid pool three. The list of supplies you'll need for this one is exactly the same as the other acid pool, except for we'll be using acetone nail polish remover instead of an open flame. I start this acid pull out in the same manner as the other one. I use my paring knife to chisel out a rock-like beveled edge. This time, instead of using heat, we're going to be using some nail polish remover to melt away the foam. The acetone causes a chemical melting reaction with the foam. I use a cotton swab to apply the nail polish remover. It just gives me a little more control, though if you want to be more randomized, you can just pour it onto the foam. Just be sure not to pour too much, as it can just melt all the way through the foam. Painting Acid Pulls 2 and 3 And now we're going to need a few things to paint up our pieces. I'm using black paint, wood glue, varnish, and a variety of craft paints. Specifically light gray, dark gray, beige, cream, white, and bright green. Also, I'm just using a variety of cheap paint brushes. I first paint a black undercoating on my pieces. I'm using a mixture of black paint, wood glue, and varnish. Most people these days are using Mod Podge and black paint, which is almost the same thing. You can even just use black paint, but the glue mixture will really toughen up the terrain. I make sure to do an extra thick coat and leave the pieces to dry. I paint the pieces with a dark gray, light gray, and beige, just wet blending everything into a mottled stony look. I dry brush a cream colored highlight over the pieces. 
For the smoother piece that we burned with the flame, I only focused on the outside rim, but for the other pitted looking piece, I made sure to dry brush a little inside the pool, just to pull out some of the details. Now I paint the inside of the pools using a bright green. I specifically used a color called Gecko by Delta Ceram Coat. For the smooth piece, I load my brush with paint, start solidly painting in the center of the pool, and work my way out. The brush will get drier as I work my way out, and I can do a sort of dry brush blend along the outer edge of the pool. I repeat this process until the middle of the pool looks nice and green, and the outer edges of the green just blend into the rock. This will help create the illusion of depth when we get to the resin pouring. I can paint a more solid coat of paint with the pitted acid pool, as we'll be going back with more details when it dries. I then dry brush some pure white over the green of the pitted acid pool. This will pull out a lot of the details and will look great when we pour the resin over it. Resin Pouring We will now be working on the resin pools. For this we'll need a hot glue gun and glue sticks, parchment paper, clear resin, a respirator, gloves, a liquid measuring cup, a silicone spatula, bright green paint, tweezers, and a lighter. First, we lay out a piece of parchment paper and do a whole bunch of random sized hot glue beads. These will later be used to give us the look of bubbling acid, so you will want a good variety of sizes. After a few minutes, the hot glue will be dry enough to remove it from the parchment paper. You'll notice that they are slightly foggy. Don't worry too much about that. Once we get them mixed in the resin, they will clear up nicely. Because we're going to be using some resin with this build, if you're going to follow along, make sure you wear a respirator and gloves. Notice that I got a good deal on this clear cast resin. All because they're pretty much worthless mixing cups were broke. Definitely keep your eye out for good deals like this. The very first thing you want to do is make sure that you have a level surface. I found out that this is a super important step, so make sure to get yourself a small leveler. Otherwise you're going to have some lopsided pools. If you happen to be getting some value out of this channel, consider joining us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you will gain access to extra footage of videos like this one and other videos that I've done in the past. Also, I'm trying to work out a couple more Patreon tiers. One of those is going to be for the people who buy from me on Etsy and eBay. I know some of you guys watch this channel just to see. The other, I want to benefit people who are crafters. I don't know quite yet what I want to do with that. If you guys have some ideas of what you'd like to see, let me know in the comments section down below. But anyway, for the people who buy from me on Etsy, I want to do like a monthly, a month, either a monthly or a bi-monthly. Is that the word? Okay. We're going to go anywhere from quarterly to monthly build. So, and I want to do it like a specialized build. I like modular terrain and all, but I think there's also a place for themed terrain. You know, like have a big lava set or have a big ice set that includes like maybe some structures and some ruins and some whatnot. Just do different themes. Jungle. We all like jungle and lava and anything like that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks so much. Back to the video. I've been talking way too much. This is a two-part resin that you can mix 50-50. They're labeled A and B side. I personally like to use a clear liquid measuring cup for both measuring and mixing my resin. It just makes less of a mess in general, and I won't have a bunch of small sticky cups sitting around. I measure out half and half just using the measuring lines on the cup. Then I mix the resin thoroughly with my silicone spatula. And when I say thoroughly, I mean thoroughly, 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 however you pronounce that. Anyway, the biggest mistake I made when I first started mixing resin was not mixing it enough. If you don't mix it enough, it will stay sticky forever. So mix it well and scrape the sides and bottom frequently. If you mix it nice and slow, there will be less bubbling, but I get a little impatient. Also, this is acid, so we won't have to worry too much about the bubbling. I then add a drop of bright green paint to the resin. Well, that was a little more of a squirt, but a drop would have been sufficient enough. And I mix that in. You don't have to use green, you can do yellow or purple or red or whatever color of acid you prefer. You can even mix two different types of resins and kind of have a swirling effect. You'll see as I'm pouring it, this is a nice slimy looking color. And when I pour the mixture, I do it slowly and in a thin stream. I noticed that this was still slightly unlevel, so I just placed a piece of foam board under one end of the glass surface I was working on. 
I wanted to try adding bubbles of hot glue right into the wet resin, but it didn't work out how I was hoping. They flattened out rather than balling up, so I picked those out of the pool and grabbed my beads of hot glue from earlier. With a pair of tweezers, I just place those randomly in the pools of acid, and when placed in the acid, I make sure to submerge them and coat the pieces completely. I turned all the hot glue beads so the flat side is facing down. Some of the beads will sink deeper than others, and that's okay. I then take out the lighter and heat up the surface of the resin. This both shines up the hot glue pieces and releases some of the tiny bubbles caused when mixing the resin. That makes the resin more transparent so we can see the details at the bottom of the pool better. And then we set those to dry overnight. Just to note on a two part resin like this, the thicker the resin, the quicker it actually dries. I don't know the science behind this, but I just find it interesting and had to share. And here's a glimpse of all three pools that we made today. The basic pool, the pitted pool, and the cheap and easy pool. My preference is for the pitted one. I really like the details you can see underneath the resin. Though, like I said earlier, the cheap version was very nostalgic for me and the most fun to make. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you want different colored acid, here's a little transition to give you some ideas. Here's our bright green we did today, a yellow, red, and purple. And now, you can continue the journey by watching one of the two videos I've handpicked for you on the screen right now.